They got jacked. All their makeup. <laughs> Look at this. Later that same evening. What's up guys, it's your boy Benny. Careful what you wish for, you just might get it. And boy, Target is getting it now. Let's go back to the summer of love, 2020, when Target was looted in Minneapolis. Remember this famous video? The fire alarms going off, people using hammers to to smash the registers. Not a single police officer, not a single person from the Target Corporation condemning the looting of its mass head store in Minneapolis. Look at those guys, they're carrying out a vending machine. They're looting the vending machine. Complete and total anarchy. What did, what did Target do in the response to this? What was Target's response? Did Target go and sue BLM? Did they declare that they're going to have full police and security staff at all stores from now on? They're going to fully prosecute to the letter of the law those which steal from their shareholders and their bottom line and destroy the lives of their employees? Did Target stand up for their customers or for rule of law or for people that don't want anarchy and crime to reign supreme? Nope, nope. Target bent over and sucked the toes of BLM, gave hundreds of millions to BLM. Target's $100 million investment in black communities, latest effort and commitment to advancing racial equ equity. Black beyond measure. Target then went full on racist and started to sell just black-owned brands. Mm-hmm. Flip it around. Sell just white-owned brands, Target. See what happens. Target commits $10 million to ongoing resources to rebuilding efforts and advancing social justice. The social justice that looted their stores. Racial equity, action, and change, says Target. Oh, boy. Reach. They started a full organization. How much money is used on diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies at Target? How much money is invested? We're committed to spending more than $2 billion with black-owned businesses by 2025. Okay. Target allowed their employees to wear Black Lives Matter masks. The same organization that looted the store. This organization. You are allowed to wear their paraphernalia inside of your store. This organization. This is Target. You're allowed to wear their swag as a Target employee. The people who did this to your stores, you're allowed to wear their clothing. Just a reminder, Target encouraged that and actually attacked customers, kicked out a customer when they confronted an employee over the Black Lives Matter mask. Oh, yes. Target went to uh, magazines and got full spreads about their commitment to Black Lives Matter, standing with black families and communities. $10 million, billions of dollars. Okay, so now what's the result? So Black Lives Matter, so, so Black Lives Matter raids your store, burns it to the ground, steals hundreds of millions of dollars from you. Instead of criticizing them, suing them and the organizers, and funding lawsuits against the group for the damage they did to your business, you give them more money, you bend over, kiss the ring, and now what happens? Oh my Look at this. It's the consequences of my own actions. Target says it will close nine stores in major cities across four states because of theft and organized crime. Mm. Wow, amazing how that happens. Target is closing nine stores in major cities across four states, claiming that all organized retail crime has made the environment unsafe for staff and customers and unsustainable for business. The big box chain and a wave of retailers, both large and small, said that they're struggling to contain store crimes that have hurt their bottom line. Many closed stores made changes to merchandise and layouts. Nevertheless, skeptics say stores have not provided enough information to back up their claims. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Got it. They're closing stores, of course, in only Democrat states. Portland, Oregon, New York, California. Hmm, interesting that. This comes as Target's uh, bottom line looks like this. Their profit margins look like this. There's now a lawsuit against Target for the destruction of shareholder value. This also coming after uh, they acquiesced to another movement that requires full and total submission to their insane demands. Pride Month disaster in Target. Target's first quarter's sale fell for the first time in six years, a result of customers' negative reaction to its pride display 
tuck-friendly swimwear that went directly towards infants and children. That was actually in the literal children's section. I walked through Target myself. I saw the children's section. It was placed in the children's section, and it had uh, infant and children gear in their pride section. Absolutely despicable. Traffic and top-line trends were affected by the reaction to the pride assortment. Sales of di on digital channels opened at least for 5% off. Digital sales slipped 10% as well. Stores, So there was 5% off in the stores and then 10% on digital. My goodness. This is what the uh, pride display looked like inside their stores. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, Target has effed around and found out. It's not just Target. CVS says it will close 900 stores by the end of 2024, 10% of all of its shops as it moves online strategy and rampant increase in shoplifting. CVS is making drastic reforms to adjust to the needs of modern online shoppers. Walgreens plans to shut 150 stores. This is the changing of America as you know it. This is a low trust society. It's amazing. CNN is the one like right, CNN is the one writing this and framing it as Target's lying. Nothing's wrong. CNN should watch more CNN. Check this out. CNN witnesses three thefts while reporting on Walgreens in San Francisco. Watch. Richie Greenberg walked into a San Francisco Walgreens when he saw in the frozen food section this. Chains, heavy chains that went from padlock to padlock on both sides of the doors. And this was bizarre, something I'd never seen before. This is just more icing on the cake telling us that rampant crime is, is, has become a, a regular part of life. So typical that in the 30 minutes we were at this Walgreens, <laughs> we watched three people, including this man, steal. Did that guy pay? Did that guy pay? He didn't pay. Walgreens says this Richmond neighborhood store with aisles of products like mustard locked behind plexiglass has the highest theft rate of all their nearly 9,000 U.S. stores, hit more than a dozen times a day. When thieves turned to cleaning out ice cream and frozen burritos, workers grew so frustrated they resorted to the chains. They were ordered down by corporate because of the negative messaging. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Control decline. Controlled demolition. CNN can't even walk through the Walgreens without witnessing three crimes in their little time there. Walgreens at 16 and Gary in San Francisco chained up freezer section. This is what low trust society looks like. This is what total societal decay looks like. It's not just, by the way, San Francisco. Of course, San Francisco is an extreme, but so is New York City. So out of control that CVS customers now have to ring a bell to get things like toothpaste. You have to ring a bell. Here's Oakland, California. Cleared out by shoplifters. Literally nothing left. Looks kind of like Target in Minneapolis. Nothing left. And while this is happening inside of America, the people who are in charge of this country, who should be horrified by this, because it is absolutely destroying our, our communities and it is destroying the ability for people to actually access items or to go into a store and grab an item if they're in need. I mean, what's sold at Walgreens and CVS? Like, people who have a cold, people who have a cough, people who need ibuprofen, the pharmacies. What are our elites doing? Oh, they're paying uh, all of the salaries of pretty much every person in Ukraine, no matter what your profession is. Oh, you thought that all of our money was just going to fight a war in Ukraine? Nope. It's going to fund the first responders. Schools, farms, fashion stores. That's right. Late Old ladies who knit are getting paid. By the American taxpayer. You are a tax farm. You are tax cattle for a globalist regime. And they're going to suck this country dry. And this is the plan. This is part of the plan. So what are we going to do about it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can't, you can't carry on in a low trust society like this any longer. Like you, you, this can't be what your stores look like. They'll run, you'll run out of places to destroy. You'll run out of things to loot. And then you'll be left effectively with a third world nation with third world country. Like, eventually the stores stop getting replenished. They just shut down. This is the end result to this. Anarcho-tyranny is what this is called. Anarcho-tyranny is a society that is led effectively by gangs 
of military age men who have nothing better to do than to go and wreak hell and havoc. Men who have done nothing for society, have never contributed anything, never built anything, can only destroy. They're part of a movement that can only destroy. Progressivism does not progress anything. It destroys. It does not provide progress. It does not construct. It deconstructs. The end goal is what you're seeing on your screen. The end goal is the chaos, because amid the chaos, they can seize power. They're evil. Do not allow these people in your cities. Vote them out. If you do live in Democrat areas, well, move. That's my best advice. You got to move. You got to go. These people aren't going to change. Get out of the cities. And until they start voting differently, then I'm not going to weep a single tear for them. End communism by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. It's your boy Betty. See you.